When Jesus was arrested, they led him to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes. And Peter followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and all the council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimonies did not agree. Then some rose up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But not even then did their testimony agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Do you answer nothing? What is it these men testify against you? But he kept silent and answered nothing. And the high priest asked him, saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, What further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be deserving of death. Then some began to spit on him, and to blindfold him, and to beat him, and to say to him, Prophesy. And the officers struck him with the palms of their hands. Immediately in the morning the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus, led him away, and delivered him to Pilate. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered and said to him, It is as you say. And the chief priests accused him of many things. But he answered nothing. Then Pilate asked him again, saying, Do you answer nothing? See how many things they testify against you? But Jesus still answered nothing. So that Pilate marvelled. Now at the feast he was accustomed to releasing one prisoner to them, whomever they requested. And there was one named Barabbas, who was chained with his fellow rebels. They had committed murder in the rebellion. Then the multitude, crying out, began to ask to do just as he had always done for them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? for he knew that the chief priests had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd, so that he should rather release Barabbas to them. Pilate answered and said to them again, But what do you want me to do with him whom you call the king of the Jews? So they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wanting to gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and he delivered Jesus, after he had scourged him, to be crucified. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we share together from Mark chapter 15, verses 1 to 15. We've reread the trial before the Sanhedrin, the council, where they all condemned him as deserving of death. But how were they going to carry out the death penalty? Now that they had condemned Jesus, they needed to orchestrate his death in a way that didn't put them in too bad a light. And it turns out, technically, they didn't have the right to pass a death penalty. So, they needed to hand him over to Pilate and have Pilate do their dirty work. And so, in chapter 15, we've read how they consulted what they would do and decided to hand him over to Pilate and to lay a political charge against Jesus so that Pilate would be required to execute him. Mark's account of the trial before Pilate is much briefer than John's and to get the full picture we need to put the four accounts together. There's more detail that the others also give on the trial before the Sanhedrin the primary charge that they bring against Jesus is that he has proclaimed himself king and is raising a rebellion against the Roman Empire, which of course is very plausible in the sense that that's what many Jewish people want to happen. It's why the soldiers in Jerusalem are on high alert that such a thing does not happen. 
that there have already been people like Barabbas and his team who have attempted to overthrow the Romans. So the charge against Jesus is that he is stirring up trouble, that he is leading a rebellion against Rome by proclaiming himself to be the Messiah. There are elements of truth in this charge because Jesus was born King of the Jews and he did fulfil the Old Testament prophecy of riding into Jerusalem on a donkey which pointed to him as being their king and he confesses that to Pilate but he says I'm no political threat I don't have an army I haven't raised a rebellion I simply teach the truth my followers are those who seek the truth to which Pilate responded, according to John, what is truth? Luke tells us that Pilate, realising that Jesus was innocent, tried to pass the buck to Herod. Herod was delighted to see Jesus, but Jesus wouldn't speak to Herod at all. Uh, Jesus recognised Herod had no legitimacy as king of the Jews. So Herod beat Jesus and sent him back to Pilate. Pilate tried to placate the Jews by having Jesus severely beaten and then paraded before them. But the chief priests incited the crowd to demand his blood. Pilate quickly realised that this wasn't a normal criminal. There was nothing that they said against Jesus that justified the death penalty. It was the chief priests who were guilty of envy. And when he suggested to the crowd that he could release Jesus, for they had a custom that at the Passover the Romans would release someone they had in custody for political reasons. The chief priests quickly came back and said, no, release Barabbas, one who was a known criminal, a notorious rebel, not Jesus. So in another very particular point, Jesus takes the place of Barabbas, Barabbas being set free because Jesus died, not just for him, but for every criminal in the whole world. And we are all criminals to some degree. Pilate's main concern was to maintain peace in the city. The very reason Pilate was in the city was because it was Passover. And this was a time when the Jews could get quite excited. And so he had to maintain peace. And this is what the chief priests play upon. Mark tells us he knew the chief priests had handed him over because of envy but he is still not able to overcome the threat of public disturbance, which would cause him to lose his job. There were two charges on which the chief priests condemned Jesus. One was that he was the Christ, anointed king over Israel. The second was that he claimed to be the son of God. John makes it plain this charge was also brought against Jesus by the chief priests to Pilate. And Pilate asked Jesus, where are you from? Realising that he was, in fact, the Son of God. But even so, he was not able to resist the political pressure that was put upon him. And so, wanting to gratify the crowd, needing to calm the crowd down, he released Barabbas to them and delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. The account that we have of the treatment of Jesus is very matter-of-fact in the sense that none of the Gospel writers seek to highlight the suffering of the Lord Jesus. They just make the simple statement, after he had scourged him, he was crucified, that they mocked him. But we need to understand behind these words the great brutality that was inflicted against the Lord Jesus. But to see that, we need to read read the Old Testament prophecies concerning it. And Isaiah said, His visage was marred more than any man. Barabbas goes free. Jesus is condemned. Condemned.